Wait a second. It's July. Pride Month was a month ago. Anyway, hello everyone. Britain here, also known as Some Oki Dude, and today I'm going to be covering Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. And if you didn't, if you didn't gather from my little uh, intro there, uh, this is a novel about. Uh, this is a good novel to read during Pride Month, and also because of the colors of this novel, I thought, eh, this will be a good summer read. It feel kind of cap. It looks like it captures the feel of summer very well. But I'm covering Razorblade Tears from S.A. Cosby, uh, my second S.A. Cosby. Um, book that I'm covering on this channel because I already covered uh, Blacktop Wasteland. I'll link that video down below. Um, but yeah, we're talking about Razorblade Tears today. I already knew that S.A. Cosby was a really talented writer that I should keep my eye on after reading his um, very good um, breakout novel, Blacktop Wasteland, which I thought was a fantastic book. And again, covered on there, won't talk too much about it. But... I ended up reading Razorblade Tears, and that has only solidified my resolve to keep my eye on S.A. Cosby, because this book is fantastic, I thought. You know, it's often hard for writers to cover prejudice in a book. It's often a theme that is not covered a lot, because a lot of authors aren't going to touch that with a 10-foot pole, because it becomes very hackneyed very quickly. I mean, you know, the old saying goes, you know, look, it's a good thing to know, don't judge people. We get it. You know, To Kill a Mockingbird already did it. But Cosby manages to cover prejudice in a very thoughtful and very complex way uh, throughout this story. And um, he does dive in to those tricky waters, and he manages to create some really great moments and manages to come away with some great insights in showing that prejudice is a very complex thing. And it doesn't... Oh, and it talks about the many ways that people are prejudiced towards each other. For instance, one of the main characters, Ike, who was actually probably my favorite character of this story, is a black man, and he often complains to Buddy Lee, who is the other main character, who is a white guy, about how he's, you know, not treated... Um, he's, he's always treated differently because he's black. You know, he's always pulled over by the police, but not just because he's doing something wrong, but it's because there's that sort of racial dynamic of, and, you know, that racial profiling. And that really annoys Ike. But I like how this novel manages to, ex manages to call out Ike's hypocrisy for complaining about that by showcasing his own prejudices, mainly towards um, the LGBTQ stuff that is... Uh, I'm, I'm, please don't get mad at me. But, um... It showcases his own prejudices and really the disgust that he has with himself that he never really came to terms with his son's sexuality before he passed away, um, which is not a spoiler. It's on the it's on the back here. Um, read that. Uh, hopefully you can read that. Yeah. Um, and really the story is about the complexity of prejudice and how prejudice can come in many ways, and not just, you know, racism, but also homophobia, or, you know, not just not being comfortable with that kind of thing. And, of course, Cosby doesn't just, just stoop to finger-pointing and saying, oh, this is wrong. It shows you why it's wrong, and it shows you the guilt and the disgust that Ike and Buddy Lee have for themselves because... They, they rejected their sons and they never were able to make up with them because now they're dead by the time that the story's over. And there's a lot of intense emotion uh, throughout this novel um, because of that. And um, I'm glad that it deals with that hypocrisy that Ike has. Um, unlike something like The Devil Takes You Home, which I also covered on this channel, which just kind of seeks to ignore the protagonist being not always sympathetic, or even likable for that matter. Cosby is a very good prose stylist. He has that uh, emotional weight that is in a lot of Dennis Lehane's novels, as well as kind of that country atmosphere and sort of hick aphorisms and humor of uh, Joe Lansdale's work. Uh, again, two guys I have also covered on this channel. Oh, jeez. But, um... Um... 
But much of the strength that comes from this novel is, like I said earlier, really comes from that emotional weight that Ike and Buddy Lee have because they rejected their sons and they never fully came to terms with who their sons were. And it's really sad. But there's also a lot of humor and heart throughout this story. We see um, Ike and Buddy Lee form a sort of friendship. They don't really get along. I wouldn't even say they necessarily like each other all that much. Um, but their relationship is really interesting, and they have a lot of really interesting conversations um, throughout the novel that I thought uh, was very well worth the was well worth the read. It's kind of like a more serious Happen Leonard, I guess, if you want to say it that. There is humor in this novel, but it's not like, you know, in Happen Leonard, it's kind of like this wacky, you know, sort of southern noir of Happen Leonard. It's more like, I don't want to, Happen Leonard is serious, but like, it doesn't have the wackiness of what Happen Leonard. It's more like, like a really like kind of darker and edgier version of Happen Leonard, if that makes sense at all. Um, and, of course, uh, Buddy Lee is also a very entertaining character. Um, I've noticed that, yeah, I've noticed that S.A. Cosby really loves that, like, white trash degenerate character, because, like, he had one of those in, um, Blacktop Wasteland. Buddy Lee is one of those. Um, I guess he just likes that character archetype for whatever reason. Um... And again, there's a lot of great humor in this. A lot of this comes from the cultural differences. You know, Ike and Buddy Lee are kind of these just, you know, regular kind of guys who don't really get this whole modern generation and their weird terms and the LGBTQ terminology. And there's a lot of humorous scenes that, that come from come from them just not getting it or using it incorrectly or, you know, just being not... I don't want to say ignorant, well, they are kind of ignorant, but, you know, there is some humor in that, but there's also some exploration about the cultural differences of our time and how, you know, a lot of people are often uncomfortable with our changing world. I, th I thought that was really fascinating. And, um, really this not what um, I would say a major theme of this novel is cultural differences in, in many ways. Rather it be white and black, straight and uh, gay, or poor or, you know, doing pretty well. I don't want to say rich, but, you know, poor or middle class, and there's even, you know, some rich people in this, um, which I, you know, won't get into. I've noticed that a favorite theme of Cosby's, it's in Blacktop Wasteland, it's in this as well, is that the sins of the father are often visited upon the son. In one way or another, it is often visited, or that the, the sins of the father often echo through their children and they're in this it's more there's that sense that ike and buddy lee feel like their sons dying and, and the brutal way that they do is almost like some sort of penance this this punishment that they've received from god or karma or whatever spiritual power that you believe in or you know just the planet because you know life isn't always fair air um, but, you know, but I really enjoy how, or I don't want to say I enjoyed, but I really admire how Cosby kind of showcases these characters kind of going through guilt and anger, and it's almost like they're being punished because they, they never came to terms with their sons. And, um, Ike and Buddy Lee definitely feel that way. They definitely feel like they let their sons down, and, um, they do try to be better as the novel goes on, e even though, um... They're they're not very nice people. <laughs> they're pretty they're pretty they're pretty violent for the most part. Um, or not that's that's a bad way to put it. They're pretty violent when they're pushed, and uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of ruminations on violence, which again reminds me of of Joe Lansdale. That sort of that kind of hick good old boy kind of aphorisms with this sort of these kind of dark brooding about violence, you know, and it, it, stuff like that. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, S.A. Cosby's a big uh, Joe Lansdale fan. No novel is perfect, of course, and uh, this book is no different. Um, I, there, the twist of the book, there's a line in this book, if you, if you kind of are like, oh, wait, is this where the story's going to go? I'll save you the suspense. That is where the story is going to go. 
Um, when you read the line, you'll probably get what I'm saying, but I do wish that Cosby had uh, handled the twist better. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe not made it so obvious for the audience. It didn't take away from the story. I still enjoyed it. I still really, you know, I had a good time. I wouldn't say I had a good time, but I admired this book, and I thought it was a very good novel, and I think a lot of people should go read it. But um, that, that did kind of... Uh, that did disappoint me a little bit that the twist was revealed that easily. That you're like, okay, this is what happens, and you know, you kind of go through that motions. I also didn't love the the implications of something with the main villain of the story. I, I get what Cosby was going for, but I don't really like what that's. I, I do have some issues with what Cosby is sort of implying with that. Um, now he might now again this is this is probably unconscious on on his part. I don't think he really meant to make that implication, but that implication is certainly there in the story. Um and I, I didn't I didn't love it, but you know, it is what it is. Um I I won't talk too much about it cuz I don't want to get too spoilery and I do think you guys should go read this and figure it out for yourselves. Um you know, I I think, you know, go oh, again, yeah, read it. Uh, despite this being a revenge story initially, um, ultimately I find that uh, Razorblade Tears is about forgiveness. Now, uh, it's funny I say that. Um, I wouldn't say that Ike or Buddy Lee are in particularly forgiving moods towards the uh, people who killed their sons, and they do wreak some very awesome vengeance. I mean, I I'm just going to say this right now. Revenge is very underrated. But Ike and Lee... Go or not? I can Lee. I can Buddy Lee go on a journey of coming to terms with the fact that they did make these mistakes and they can't go back from these mistakes, but they can. Um, they can honor their sons' lives. They can become better. They can come to terms with those mistakes and not and take the steps to not repeat those mistakes again. Now, I wouldn't say the story ends on a positive note. There are some dark stuff that happened at the ending, but there is that theme of forgiving yourself and coming to terms with the fact that you did make a mistake. And it's yes, it's okay to be upset that you made those mistakes, and it's okay to not. To, I wouldn't say it's okay to beat yourself, but it's not entirely healthy to beat yourself up about those mistakes, and that it's very important to forgive yourself and to do better that's basically what I think that this novel is trying to say is that um, and you know I, I've met a lot of people that this has happened to they've come out to their parents and their parents just you know they just they're not sure how to handle it it's not necessarily that you know they're uh, I, I don't want to say they're not homophobic but there is certainly a a discomfort there that they're not really sure how to handle and um, it's sad. It's very sad. And this book deals with it with uh, deals with that um, in a very honest and authentic way that I thought was very nuanced and and very respectful. Um, I, now I am not a gay person. I I'm, I don't know what that's like, but I really found myself relating to this on on some levels. And um, I do think this is a good novel to read during Pride Month. I, I enjoy. I enjoyed reading this book. I thought it was I thought it was fantastic. And ultimately the theme of forgiveness is what won me over about this book. Aside from the great writing, the humor, the good action scenes, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of shooty stuff in this, you know, I love that. Um But yeah. Um that is Razor Blade Tears. That is the best I got for right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Go check me out on Twitter. Check me out on Goodreads and Letterbox, where I write reviews that are probably more coherent than the ones you just heard right now. Um, I do have a Discord, but I'm kind of messing with it at the moment. Um, yeah. Razorblade Tears. Check it out, guys. It's a great book. See you guys later. Bye-bye.